تبسم 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمع مبارك to you to your loved ones and of course to all our viewers of uh, ITV as well on behalf of the imams the musallis and of course the officials of Masjid Abu Bakr Siddiq in Erasmia Pretoria I'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely welcome our guest Sheikh Yasser Qadi as a brief <coughs> introduction to to Sheikh Yasser Sheikh Yasser was born in Houston Texas USA he completed his primary and secondary education in Jeddah of course you know Jeddah is in the Hejaz in Arabia he has a BSc in chemical engineering from the University of Houston he also graduated with a BA in Islamic sciences and an MA in Islamic theology he then completed his doctorate in religious science from Yale University currently Sheikh is uh, the Dean of Al Maghrib Institute and a professor at Rhodes in Memphis, USA. His published works include The Hidden Shirk, Dua, The Weapon of the Believer, amongst many others. Unfortunately, we only have, being the Juma, we have limited time, so I will not waste your time, and I think we'll try and give the allocated space of time to Sheikh Yasser to address you. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. It is a fact of human nature that when we desire something or when we are in need of something, we are constantly thinking about that object of desire. So when we're hungry, we cannot help but think of food. When we're thirsty, we cannot help but think of drink. When we love something passionately, whether it's money, whether it's another person, our thoughts constantly go to that object. So then, the question arises, the one who claims to love Allah, the one who understands that he needs Allah at all times, how often do you think this person should be thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who truly believes in Allah and understands our need towards Allah and shows love of Allah, this person will constantly be thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in our religious tradition, the thinking of Allah is called dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. You are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Lord has commanded us in the Quran, to remember him frequently. Our Lord has commanded in the Quran that we praise him and mention his name in the morning and in the evening. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira wa sabbi'uhu bukratan wa asila. O you who believe, remember Allah of frequent remembering and praise him morning and evening. So in this brief khatir, this brief lecture, I want to summarize and remind myself and all of you some of the important blessings that come from the remembrance of Allah. And these blessings are beyond number. These blessings cannot be listed. And one of the famous scholars of Islam, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, he made, wrote a book called Al-Wabil al-Sayyib. And in it, he summarized in over 100 points the specific blessings mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah for doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of those blessings is that dhikr of Allah gives life to the heart. The heart is as if it is dead. And by doing dhikr, we are feeding the heart. By doing dhikr, we are giving nourishment to the qalb, to the heart. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we are in need of everything, our bodies and our souls. And the soul is in need of the nourishment, just like the food, just like the food nourishes the body, the dhikr nourishes the soul. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who remembers Allah, in contrast to the one who does not remember Allah, is like the one who is alive, in contrast to the one who is dead. مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The one who does dhikr is alive. The one who does not do dhikr is dead. Meaning what? The qalb becomes dead when it doesn't do dhikr. Just like the body dies when you don't feed it, so the qalb will die when you don't feed it. And so the dhikr of the soul, the nourishment of the soul makes the soul come alive. And therefore the dhikr of Allah makes you become alive. So the one who remembers Allah is alive. The one who does not remember Allah is not alive. And this is the life of the heart and the death of the heart. Our Prophet Sallallahu also told us that dhikr of Allah is a fortress that protects us from shaitan. He told us that the one who remembers Allah has protected himself in a protected fortress against shaitan. The Arabic he said, dhikrullahi hisnun haseen. It is a protected fortress against shaitan. So the one who remembers Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he protects himself from shaitan. And that is why before we enter the restroom, we say a dhikr. That is why before we take our clothes to change them, we say a dhikr. Our Prophet ﷺ said that when you say Bismillah, before you change your clothes, then your body becomes protected and shaitan cannot see you. Shaitan loves to see evil. He wants to make fun of you. He wants to see you in a state that is awkward. When we say Bismillah, we are protected from shaitan seeing us. So our Prophet ﷺ tells us of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr acts as a protection, as a barrier. Of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr brings about a peace and a beautiful life. Allah tells us in the Quran that when He sent our father Adam down to this earth, He told Adam and through Adam all of us, He told Adam and through Adam all of us that whenever there comes to you a guidance, whoever follows the guidance, shall not suffer or perish. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى But whoever turns away from my dhikr, whoever turns away from my dhikr, Allah says, shall live a miserable life and shall be resurrected on the Day of Judgment blind. Now, forget the punishments for right now. Pause here. Shall live a miserable life. Amazing. The dhikr of Allah will bring about a sweetness of life. And the absence of dhikr will bring about a miserable life. So this demonstrates for us that of the blessings of dhikr is that when our hearts are constricted, when we feel the pain, the anguish, the suffering of any cause, and all of us suffer daily, whether it is financial, whether it is the problems of the job, whether it is politics of the office or of our family, whether it is a spousal issue and we're having problems, or our children, or, or the society, or a health issue. We have been created to overcome pain and suffering. This dunya is a dunya of pain and suffering. What is the medicine that will help us overcome that pain? Dhikrullah. Dhikrullah. Anytime your qalb is in distress, Anytime your mind cannot concentrate, anytime you are finding yourself feeling a sense of emptiness, loneliness, depression, pessimism, whatever it is, Allah is telling us, do my dhikr, I will make your life easier for you. Do my dhikr, I will make my life easier for you. And that is why when our Prophet ﷺ felt the anguish of this dunya, of this world, when there was something troubling him, he would stand up in order to pray. And the prayer is the essence of dhikr. The prayer is the essence of dhikr. Allah told Musa ﷺ, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Establish the salah for my dhikr. So even the salah, which is the greatest act of worship, it was established for even a higher role, for a higher purpose. Even the salah has a higher purpose. And what is the higher purpose of salah? 
أقم الصلاة لذكري Establish the salah for my dhikr Of the blessings of doing dhikr of Allah Is that the one who does dhikr The one who frequently does dhikr It shall be what he dies upon Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Whoever says La ilaha illallah as his last breath shall enter Jannah. May Allah make us say La ilaha illallah at the time of our deaths. Now how do we guarantee that we will say La ilaha illallah? Well, there is no guarantee. But the closest we can do, the best we can do is to frequently say La ilaha illallah while we're alive. To make it our custom, our habit, to constantly say, La ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al We always say dhikr, so that when we see the angel of death, the first thing that comes to our mind is not some vulgar curse word. It's not some other phrase that is of no relevance. The first thing that comes is what we have conditioned ourselves to say at times of calamity and distress. La ilaha illallah. That's of the blessings of dhikr. Of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr protects us on the day of judgment. Our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, seven are the people, they shall be sheltered on that day when there is no shelter other than his shelter. Seven are the people. And one of those people, our Prophet sallallahu said, رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَا Was a person who did dhikr of Allah when nobody was there. Nobody's looking. He's not doing it to show off. He's not doing it so that people say, Oh, this is namazi muttaqi. This guy is mashallah, religious guy. He doesn't have a tasbih that he's showing off to people. I'm not saying tasbih is wrong. I'm saying he doesn't have it to show off to the people. Because the thing can be right, but the niyyah Allah knows. So the niyyah is for the sake of Allah. So when he's all alone, he remembers Allah. And when he remembers Allah, he becomes overwhelmed with emotion. Tears come down his eyes. The Prophet ﷺ said, that man is one of the seven. One of the seven who shall be sheltered on that day that there is no shelter. Of the blessings of the dhikr of Allah, is that dhikr of Allah is something that is very, very easy to do. No preconditions needed. You don't have to have wudu. You don't have to face the qibla. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to do anything. You can do dhikr of Allah in any state. Ritual state, doesn't matter. Does not matter by unanimous consensus of all of the scholars of Islam. The one, even in the state of Janaba, can say la ilaha illallah, can say Allahu Akbar. Yes, they cannot recite the Quran. True, they cannot recite the Quran. But they can do dhikr. And this is based on the hadith in Sahih Bukhari that Aisha says the Prophet would mention Allah during all times, during all of his states he would mention Allah. So you're allowed to mention the name of Allah even when you're in the state of Janaba. When a woman is in her cycle, she may do dhikr. Not Quran, not Salah, but Dhikr. So Dhikr can be done at any time, in any place. You're waiting for the bus, you're waiting for a meeting, you're waiting for something, you have nothing to do. You turn to Dhikr. And Dhikr is so easy. You just mention Allah's name and you praise it. Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And it's so easy and yet it is so blessed. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, two are the phrases. Two are the phrases, they are light on the tongue, heavy in the scale, and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al -azim. So of the blessings of dhikr, it's so easy, and it has no requirements, no preconditions, and it is so blessed and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the blessings of dhikr, is that dhikr expands our jannat, our gardens. Dhikr makes our jannat bigger. How do we know this? In a beautiful hadith reported in Tirmidhi, that our Prophet went up to Isra al Mi'raj in the journey, Mi'raj journey. In the Isra, he went up, uh, Isra, he went to Jerusalem, Mi'raj, he went up to uh, the highest, highest heavens. And he met Ibrahim alayhi salam. He met Ibrahim alayhi salam. And our Prophet tells us, I met my father Ibrahim on the night of Isra al Mi'raj. And he told me, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Give my salams to your ummah. So, Nabi Ibrahim is giving us here in this room his salams through the most noble descendant of his, the most noble progeny of his, the most noble prophet, and that is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibrahim is giving us his salam. 
And then he says, and give them a message. وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ Tell them that Jannah is beautiful land, flat and fertile soil, but it is barren. It is barren. Jannah, beautiful land, fertile soil, but there's nothing on it. Now, how can you have Jannah without trees? How can you have Jannah without the date palms and whatnot? Ibrahim السلام, told us. And that the seedlings, the saplings, the saplings is the small little miniature plant. It's already out of the seed. And you plant it so you're almost guaranteed it's going to grow. And the sapling that you will plant is Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. So every time you say Subhanallah, one more tree up there. Every time you say Alhamdulillah, one more tree. Allahu Akbar, one more tree. So you want to build your Jannah? You have your plot of land? You have to plant the seeds. So every dhikr that you do shall give you a seed up there. There are many, many blessings of dhikr. But they can all be summarized in one simple verse. In fact, it's not even a verse, it's half of a verse. Five words in the Quran. The whole blessings of dhikr. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al Five words. Allah, know, realize, know this fact. Only through the dhikr of Allah will the hearts find peace. Only through the dhikr of Allah will the hearts find peace. And all of us are looking for peace in this crazy world. All of us are looking for peace in this materialistic dunya world. We all want to feel happy and content. And our Lord has told us there's only one way. The final point, how is dhikr done, brothers and sisters? Much can be said, time is limited. Three quick points, three quick points. Action items. Number one, number one, make dua to Allah to perfect your dhikr. Our Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal that, O oh Mu'adh, after every salah, make this dua. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. O oh Allah, help me to do your dhikr and to thank you and to worship you. This is number one. Number two, to perfect our dhikr, is we should memorize the adhkar from a Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. What did he used to say when he entered the house? What did he used to say when he, uh, the moon was seen? What did he used to say in the beginning of the month? What did he used to say when he left the house? What did he used to say this, that, in the morning, in the evening, after Fajr, after month? So the routine is there. And there are so many good books written about the routine of the dhikr of the Prophet ﷺ. So we should try our utmost. Who better to teach us how to do dhikr than our Prophet ﷺ? And the final point, and with this we conclude, that dhikr is not just an action of the tongue. Dhikr is an action of the heart as well. And what this means is that when we do dhikr of Allah, it's not just air that is expelled from our lungs and happens to go through our pharynx and our, and our, and our tongue and our mouth in a certain way. No, dhikr has to be performed with the qalb as well. So we say it and we mean it. We praise Allah and we understand what we're saying. Subhanallah, how perfect is Allah. Alhamdulillah, all glory is due to Him. La ilaha illallah, nothing is worthy of being worshipped other than Allah. Allahu Akbar, there's nothing more important to me, more grander, more bigger, more better, more important than Allah. How can we say Allahu Akbar, then be distracted by the dunya? How can we say Allahu Akbar and then money is more important to us than Salah? How? That means we're saying it and we're not believing it, we're not meaning it. When I say Allahu Akbar, what this means is nothing is more important to me than Allah. Allah is more important. So when we do dhikr, it has to be from the qalb and from the tongue. So these are the three action items. Make dua to Allah after every salah. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa usni ibadatik. Number two, memorize the adhkar of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa What did he used to say when he entered the house, when he saw this, when he did that, during the morning, in the evening. And number three, understand what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. Memorize not just the wording, but the meaning. And then say it from the heart. Say it while you mean it. Say it as you believe in it. And when you come 
combine these three, insha'Allah ta'ala, it will perfect our dhikr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who worship Allah and, and remember Him frequently. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.